Hey, it's Dave Salvadore of Blue Line Design. Thanks for coming back to my channel for the final part in my epic Hero Quest dungeon board build. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you how I made those LED torch light pillars. I learned how to make these little LED pillars from Tabletop Witchcraft. I'll have a link in the description to his channel. Today I'm gonna to share with you how I made them, so let's get right into it. In this video, I'm going to make a pair of these torch light pillars. There's a plug-in LED torch. The battery is hidden on the inside of the pillar and kept together by magnets, and the torch will plug right in there. And I'm gonna show you how to make these for yourself. I'm gonna be using XPS foam again, more of the screws. I'm gonna be using these heat shrink tubes, these little batteries. I ordered the candlelight flickering diodes. I'm going to use green stuff to sculpt the torches. I'm going to use these tiny gems for rivets. This 3D textured roller for the pillar stones. And I bought the smallest washers that I could get for the torches. We're going to start with making the LED torches. I test to make sure the LEDs are working. You're going to see me repeatedly do that through the building process. Now out of the heat shrink tubing kit, take the two smallest tubes. You're gonna take the smallest tube and slip it over one of the wires. Then carefully with a lighter, you're going to shrink the tube around the wire. Be careful when you do this not to do it too much or the heat will burn out the bulb. You then wanna measure and cut the next biggest size tube so that it fits over both of the wires and then carefully heat shrink that on as well. And I test it to make sure I didn't burn out the bulb. I slightly bent the wires in a shape similar to this so that it would stick out from the pillar and also that it would clamp down over the battery better. Next I put a washer over top of the torch and use a little bit of hot glue to hold it into place. I then mixed up a small blob of the green stuff so that I could create the little wall mount at the base of the torch. I wrapped a small strip of it around the washer and press it into place using a sculpting tool. Using water with green stuff is important to keep it from sticking to your tools. Once I had a good shape in place, I then took some of the small gems and pressed them into the green stuff to create rivets for the wall mount. I stuck those in some foam to dry and now I can start working on the pillar. I made the top of the pillar and the base of the pillar one and a half inch wide by one and a quarter so that they could overlap the tiles, but not so much that it would get in the way of gameplay. I cut out all the squares needed to make the pillars and the bases. I wanted to make the tops of the pillars look interesting, so I gave it a stepped look by cutting the top part in half and making one part of it a little bit smaller. Now don't get too crazy with trying to make everything perfect. This is one of those things that the imperfection of it is what makes it look cool because it looks like it was handmade. To scribe in some separation brick lines, you can use a pen, a Sharpie pen, or even a file to do that job. Then I used my project knife to quickly bevel some of the edges. Then using a piece of balled up tin foil, I rolled in some stone texture. I then glued together the two pieces that would create the tops of the pillars. With the tops done and the bases done, I can now work on the main body of the pillar. I hot glue two pieces together. I bevel them, texture them, then use my 3D printed texture roller to press in some big block texture into the pillars. Using hot glue, I assemble the base and the top of the pillars. For one of the pillars, I thought I'd give it a little more personality by breaking off a chunk of the corner as if there was some battle in the dungeon and something flew into it and smashed it or, I don't know, fireball? I don't know. I hot glued some gravel to the base to show some of the debris that had fallen down during the battle. To make the battery compartment, I use a circle template to draw in a circle as a guide and then carve it out carefully using an X-Acto knife. I then use a sculpting tool to dig out the foam to make a little compartment for the battery to sit in. I carve out a small notch that the wires of the torch will go through. 
and then drill in a screw that the magnet will be attached to to hold the battery in. And if you saw part one of the build, this is the same principle as using the magnets to screw method for the walls to the floor. I'll also put in a screw and magnet for the top side of the pillar as well. Using the same template that I had from the build of the previous video, I marked out the holes and drilled in the screws so that the pillars can be magnetized to the base. Now to make the flame, the flame! What you do is you take some hot glue, and there is no science to this, but you take hot glue and you carefully begin to wick out a flame. I used water on my fingers to actually form it. You can use the tip of the hot glue gun to add some flame effects. This is just something you're gonna have to play with to make it look good and you can have a lot of fun with this. I also used the lighter to kind of melt the surface of it to bring the gloss back as well. In that small groove, I glued in a tiny magnet that I got from Hobby Lobby. They're very small, powerful magnets but this magnet will really help the washer to stick to the wall and keep the torch in its place. With the pillars now totally completed in their construction, I can move on to painting. I'm not going to go through the entire painting process again. It's the same one that I used in the part two video where I painted the walls. On all the pieces, I did a base coat, dry brushing, Dungeon wash. Some stone work. Some highlights. And of course, some moss. Now with your completed pillars, you can add some ambient torch light wherever you want. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed that series. Let me know in the comments section below if you're building your own dungeon. By the way, if you ever go out on a date, don't say, how'd you like to come over my place and see my dungeon? <laughs> hey, where are you going? Just don't, mm. I'm gonna take a little bit of time off to enjoy Christmas with my family. I plan to start up a new series in mid-January. If you wanna be notified of that, hit the bell icon so you can get notifications. If you haven't subscribed, you know, a good New Year's present would be me hitting a thousand subscribers. We're so close. If you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button, it'd really help me out. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And until 2022, keep drawing, keep designing.